Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa and we really appreciate you being here with us today. We are going to make something that's a real treat. We are making chocolate tea bread. Now this recipe is one that I've had since 1997. Melissa and I were school teachers as we have said before and in the winter, I guess the fall of 1997, sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we had a student who showed up at school with a loaf of chocolate tea bread for every fifth grade teacher. Well, this boy was happy. And it was so good that I asked her mother if she would share the recipe. And she did that. So we have made this tons of times. It's really good. It's a good moist bread that's good to have for breakfast or as a late night snack. Goes really well with a mug of hot tea or some hot cocoa or a cup of coffee. So we're going to make chocolate tea bread for you today. Let's talk about what we're going to use. We're going to start with one half cup of cocoa. This is unsweetened cocoa. Then we're going to use two cups of all-purpose flour, one half cup of white sugar, and one half cup of packed brown sugar. Then we're going to add two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. Then we'll finish it with one cup of chocolate chips, two eggs, one cup of buttermilk, and one half cup of oil, and we're using canola oil. Now, you will see that I have already prepared my loaf pan, and I have just lined it with a piece of parchment paper that's hanging over the sides so that I can lift it out and it doesn't stick. The first thing I want to do is remove about a fourth of a cup of these chocolate chips because we want those for the top of the bread. So I'm just going to take out some of those. Forget that, I'm gonna use my hand. It's clean, I just washed my hands before we started, so there we go. I'm gonna take those out. I'm gonna take the rest of these chips and put in a bowl, and I'm going to put in with those just a little bit of the flour from our two cups. And I'm doing that so that they don't sink to the bottom when we add them to the batter. So I'm just going to stir those up. They won't be completely coated. They're not gonna turn white or something, but you can see that they get a little bit of a coating on them from that flour. And that just kind of helps suspend them in that batter so they don't all sink to the bottom. Okay. So there's our chocolate chips. Now, we want to start by, I'm gonna move all this back just for a minute so I can have a place to put my bowl. We're going to start by sifting together our flour and our cocoa. So I'm just gonna put those in our sifter and sift those together. <laughs> okay, kind of had an explosion there. If you don't have a sifter, you can just put them in a bowl and whisk them together really well. What you're doing is trying to get the lumps out of cocoa. And the reason I put the flour in with it is so that they just kind of blend together. Then I don't have to whisk them together. But you can see in here, can you see the lumps in that, those, in that cocoa? Yes. So that's what you want to get rid of. You do not want those lumps in your batter. And you just, you know, bang on it a little bit and sift it. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Now, we are finished with those two. We're just going to add our sugar and our packed brown sugar. And I am gonna whisk those together just a little bit just to incorporate them. And yes, the brown sugar does have some lumps in it, but you can just take your whisk and kind of beat those out of there. And they will dissolve, it's just sugar. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's blended well. 
Now we're going to add two teaspoons of our baking powder. One teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda's getting low. I'll have to replenish that soon. There we go. And then just three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna be careful here and not fill that full. Okay. Now we can, I think we're finished with that. Now we can just gently whisk those in too. Just make sure they're all stirred together well. Now it's time to add our wet ingredients. So I'm just going to kind of make a well in the middle of my dry ingredients where I can add my wet ingredients. I'm gonna start with my eggs and I will do those right into my bowl here. I don't wanna do it into my mixing bowl just in case I have a bad egg or I get a piece of shell. I don't want that to happen, so. Break that into my bowl, my little bowl, and then add it to my mix. And I'm going to add my one cup of buttermilk. I'm going to use this same measuring cup to measure out half a cup of oil. Here we go. Okay. I'm gonna get that in the sink. And now we can start whisking this together. Work those eggs up a little bit. Start whisking. This is a really rich chocolatey, moist bread. That is really, really good. It's not really a cake. I know sometimes you would look at this and think, that's more of a cake batter. Well, it's heavier than a cake. It's more like a, like a bread, which is why it's called chocolate tea bread. You can see that the batter's pretty thick. Now, I'm going to switch to that spatula, Melissa, if I can reach it. Oh, I know people hate that. I'm sorry, but I have to get it out of there. And we want all of that, so we don't want to waste it. Okay. Let's just fold this until we don't see any of that flour left. By the way, you can do this with a hand mixer or in your stand mixer. It's perfectly fine to do that. But this one's pretty easy, and I thought, eh, we'll just mix it by hand today. Now, I am going to stir in my chocolate chips and that extra flour. So let's just put those in. And we don't really want to stir and stir and stir them. We just want to get it incorporated and be done with it. We don't want to see any of that flour, but we don't want to over mix it either. You don't want to make it tough. So we'll stir it just until we don't see any streaks of that flour. Okay. Now, we're going right into our loaf pan. This is a nine by five loaf pan. We're just gonna go right in with it. We'll turn that just a little bit. It's always a good idea when you're doing bread to line the bottom. It doesn't hurt to line the sides either. It just keeps it from sticking on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna scrape this out. 
spray your baking pan? I did not because I lined it. And on the ends, if it does stick a little bit, I can always just take a knife down the edge and loosen it. If I hadn't lined it with parchment paper, I certainly would have sprayed it. But since I lined it, there was really no reason to do that. It wouldn't hurt to, but you don't need to. Let's make sure we have it all out of there. There's no reason to throw it away, is there? So let's get it all. We might want to leave just a little bit in case somebody wants to lick the bowl. Well, I could make a guess. And I think everybody who's been watching our channel for a while could guess too. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my spoon just to kind of smooth that out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. but. And now we're just going to sprinkle our chocolate chips right on top. Just try to scatter them as evenly as you can. It's not gonna make a big difference, but you don't want a big pile of them in one place and then a bare spot somewhere else. Okay, there's one that dropped. Okay, now we are going in a preheated 350 degree oven for 50 to 60 minutes. You will need to test the center with a toothpick or a, a sharp knife to see if the center is done. If it comes out wet or gooey, you know the middle's not done. You'll need to leave it in a little longer. I have made this where I ended up leaving it as long as 65 minutes, but usually 50 to 60 minutes will, will do it. So I will start checking it at about 50 minutes. I'll look at it. If it looks like it's about done, then I may test the center by the time it hits 60 minutes, I will definitely be testing the center. So in we go, and we'll be back when it's ready to eat. We really had not planned to come back and let you see the bread straight out of the oven, but it is just such a beautiful bread that we thought we would come back and let you see it. Our chocolate tea bread has cooled slightly. It's still warm. And we have sliced it, and I'm ready to do a taste test. I think I'm gonna take this piece right here. Maybe you ready for a, let, let me show you something first. I don't know if you can see it on there, but you can see those chocolate chips they through there. They didn't all settle to the bottom. They did not settle to the bottom, and that's because we put just a little flour on them before we stirred them in. So it works. You want the first bite? I would love the first bite. I knew you would. And I'll get you a small bite. Okay, here you go. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. It's so good. Wow. You mentioned tea and coffee. I think I'm gonna go with milk. milk. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> oh, a big glass of cold milk with this. Mm. Man, that is so good. Wow. We really do appreciate that. You hang out with us and watch our videos. We would like to ask you to click that thumbs up button right below the video. And if you've never clicked the subscribe button, we invite you to do that. That just joins you to our channel. Right beside that subscribe button is a little notification bell. It looks like a little dinner bell. If you click it in the word all, 
YouTube will notify you every time we add a new video so you'll never miss one. Also, there is a share button right below the video. If you would hit that share button and share it with your friends and family, that would greatly help us build our channel and we would appreciate that. Right below the video, there is a description box and it's pretty narrow, but if you click anywhere in there where that title is, that box expands. And Melissa always puts the written recipe right there for you so you don't have to write it down as we're going through. Every video that we post has the written recipe in that description box and our contact information is right under the recipe. And of course, there is a place at the bottom for you to leave a comment if you'd like to do that. We do enjoy reading those comments. Thank you again for joining us for Chocolate Tea Bread. I hope you make it. Give it a try. I think you'll love it. Please remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.